Hi everyone, welcome to the lab. In one of my previous videos I showed how I managed to make a memory module for Fluke scope meters. I will put a link in the description. And my approach at that time was to pre-program flash chips before soldering and to read the original chips I had to desolder them from the original Fluke memory module. But I had to desolder them anyway because I needed to trace connections on the board and now I would like to be able to read and program already assembled modules. In particular, because the version of firmware in this module is 6.15, and that's the latest I could upgrade it to. But the latest available from Fluke is version 8.04. But it turns out it's not possible to go from uh, major version 6 to version 7 or 8, as I understand, it was only possible in a Fluke service center. And here I have yet another 199C scope meter. Perhaps a newer revision, because it has a different memory module. You see, it is sitting horizontally, because it has a special connector, instead of a simple card edge connector here. And I'm not sure why they decided to redesign it. It seems to me it is a bit more complicated than necessarily. But anyway, this module has a version of firmware 702, and it must be possible to upgrade that one to the latest available. And I guess that Fluke must have some special software utility to read and write modules in scope meters, but I don't have it and perhaps no one does. So I'm thinking about making a special programmer, and I found this connector. Unfortunately, it's not quite the right size. This uh, 1.2 millimeter board can barely be forced into this connector just a little bit. Not ideal, but should work. And this connector seems to fit just fine. Let's go. Here is the schematic. There are so many ways to go about this, and several painful decisions had to be made, in particular which microcontroller to use. I am more familiar with Atmel microcontrollers, so I chose ATmega3290PA with just enough pins for this application, about $5 a piece, and I decided to use this FTDI chip, FT231XS in particular, for USB to serial conversion. For this one-off project I didn't want to bother writing a USB driver for PC, and there are drivers for this chip available of course, so you just plug it in, a USB serial port appears, and off you go communicating with your microcontroller. The speed might not be the best, but for this one-off project it is not critical, should be good enough. This is a 32-bit module, so we need 32 lines for data, 20 lines for the address, and few more lines to control this thing, like uh, these uh, chip select lines, uh, read, write, reset, and uh, a few more. So I connected the uh, data bus to four 8-bit ports, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And address, uh, 8 lines here, 7 more lines here, and 5 more lines here. And uh, on this port we have 2 lines to communicate with FTDI chip. These are uh, control lines for memory. And uh, here on this port we have uh, in-system programming port. Uh, this connector here, and uh, we have uh, this line to control this uh, p-channel MOSFET uh, switch to turn a uh, 3.3 volt rail for memory module on and off, and a few lines uh, which are probably not quite necessary, I believe these are select lines for RAM chips. I connected them anyway, because I could, just in case I decide one day to write, let's say, a test for RAM chips. 
I'm not sure I will ever implement that, but why not reserve this in hardware, because I can. Here we have USB port, a few filtering capacitors, ferrite bead also for filtering, 3.3 volt regulator, a filter cap after that, a quartz crystal with a couple of capacitors, a few more capacitors here, a couple of resistors, and a few LEDs. Transmit receive, power LED from USB port, and this uh, memory power LED. And that's it. Should work just fine. And here is the board. Four layers, not too complicated. Mostly SMD, just a few through hole parts this crystal and these two connectors. And here is 3D view. Let's rotate it a bit. Looks fine, no problem. Here is my order from JLCPCB. Minimum order, 5 boards, about $10 delivered, it's time to build one. Here it is, ready to go, nothing on the other side. Now it's time to write software, firmware for this micro and another piece of software to control it from a computer. And here I have a so-called USB ASP programmer, which connects uh, like so. And it has to be 3.3 volts in this case, and this thing supports 3.3 volt mode with this jumper, but I had to modify it slightly. I bought this thing years ago, so I don't uh, remember exactly. I believe this jumper switched uh, voltage on a pin here, but this chip still ran at 5 volts, so output pins on this interface still had uh, 5 volt levels. And that may or may not work, and might be even dangerous for some chips, I believe. And this mod fixes that. And here is how a memory module fits into this connector. As I said before, it can be barely squeezed in, just a little bit. And also there is some extra room to shift it a little bit, so it has to be inserted carefully to align it properly. Which is not ideal, of course, but that's the best connector I could find, so it will have to do the job. And here we are. I have written the firmware in C, of course, and another piece in Python to control this thing. And here it is, reading the module. And of course, this is just a working prototype, not a production quality piece of software. A little rough around the edges, but gets the job done. No support for older modules with more flash memory yet, but I did implement a RAM test. Just a quick and simple test to make sure that all address and data lines seem to work. I will speed this up, the whole process takes about 3 minutes, limited by the speed of the serial port of course. Perhaps it can be made a bit faster, but doesn't matter much for this one-off project. The reading is done. Here I made a copy of this module, let's give it a go. Version 7.02, wonderful! And now look at this, I managed to upgrade this thing to the latest version 804. So this project was a success, thanks for watching, bye.